Britain has this weird relationship with design. When there's a big exciting new trend like Art Nouveau, Art Deco or Googie, we'll tentatively adopt elements of it, but we'll very rarely go all out in the way that, say, France or America do. So, what on earth happened at Southgate? Southgate is a station on the northeastern section of the Piccadilly line. It was opened in March 1933. At this time, London Underground was looking to the future. The days of competition between different forms of transport in London were on the way out, and cooperation was coming in. In July 1933, the same month that the extension would be completed, London's buses, trams and tube trains would come together under the London Passenger Transport Board, or London Transport as it was known to the public. It was time to forge a new corporate identity, one that reflected this exciting new time. The man in charge was Frank Pick, the commercial manager. Pick was a man with a philosophy. I want you to imagine that I put a capital P at the beginning of the word philosophy there. Pick had begun his career working for the North Eastern Railway at York before coming south with his boss, George Gibb. Pick's philosophy was fitness of purpose. Design should be elegant, simple, and above all, useful. Furthermore, he believed that good design could improve society itself. He found a kindred spirit in Charles Holden. Holden was already an experienced and respected architect when the two met in 1915, as founder members of the Design and Industries Association. The City and South London Railway's extension to Morden in the 1920s gave the two of them the opportunity to put their philosophy to the test. The stations were a success, but they wanted to take things further. The Piccadilly Line extension would give them the opportunity to do just that. In 1930, the two of them went on a tour of Europe to look at the very latest in modernist architecture. Eric Asplund's Stockholm Public Library and Willem Dudok's Hilversum City Hall – I hope I'm pronouncing all of those things right, but I wouldn't bet on it – would prove particularly influential. The stations on the Morden extension had been built in Portland stone, but Holden and Pick were interested in the possibilities of concrete and glass. The style of architecture they came up with was known as the brick box, which sounds very boring, but reflects the fact that bold geometric shapes were the central element of design. Every station was to be unique, but with a commonality of style that would instantly communicate that this was a London underground building. As for the interior, Pick summed the concept up as the passenger must be made to feel as though he were a guest. The sense of orderliness must flow from some unity that binds together all the various components that constitute the well-equipped station into the expression of a single idea. Holden found Pick challenging to work for, but in a good way. He not only had to design the basic building, but he had responsibility for the fixtures and fittings inside to ensure that they all worked together. At Southgate, he really went to town. He was presented with a large corner plot to work with, and he made the most of it. That being said, I should give credit to C.H. James, who assisted Holden on this station. Holden was prolific, but even he couldn't do it all alone. The station consists of a circular ticket hall, surrounded by a bus lane, surrounded by a parade of shops. The line here dips into a tunnel, unlike the neighbouring stations, which are in the open air. Curves and circles are the order of the day, and it's very much in line with the streamlined modern style of architecture. It almost feels like a predecessor of Googie architecture, the rather out there style that became popular in America in the 50s. The ticket hall is topped by an odd sculptural feature that looks something like an electrical insulator, a rare example of a purely ornamental element. I'm just speculating here, but I suspect the resemblance to electrical equipment was deliberate. The 1930s were still firmly within the age of steam, and electric trains were the acme of modernity. I rather like these rather literal signs in the Johnston typeface above the shops. Inside, we can see more of the Pick Holden philosophy at work. Southgate is Grade 2 listed, so a lot of original features survive. The lighting is particularly notable. There are these standing lamps and the fine uplighters on the escalator. At platform level, here's an interesting thing. The tiles at the stations on this section of line all have different coloured trim. Here, they're orange. 
London Transport were evidently very proud of their new stations. In fact, they advertised them as a kind of tourist attraction in themselves. But Pick seems to have been particularly pleased with Southgate and actually requested that this kind of layout be repeated wherever possible. They were never quite so fortunate again, although Redbridge has definite echoes of Southgate. But that just means that Southgate is unique. All the stations Holden designed were unique, of course, but Southgate stands out. If Pick and Holden had managed to repeat the feat elsewhere, it would detract from what is a very special station indeed. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this Jet Age tale from the tube. If you did, zap that like button and consider subscribing for more. Thanks, as always, to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the C.H. James to my Charles Holden. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the Tube.